that is a plan that God gave us last month uh, to start this month and just truly continually build. Love your brother as yourself. Do good to somebody. Ten people a month. Pray ten minutes a day. For God to forgive us of our sin and heal our land. And then uh, make sure you get in your tithe then. Worship the Lord with your tithe. It's not just pay your tithe. It's come to the understanding that God wants to bless your life. And he said, I will rebuke the devourer. If every believer tithes this week, every business that is connected to a believer would be protected under the tithe. And it would change everything here. I've noticed that people are are going back to their jobs, and America is moving to a certain degree. You can see the oil industry is kicking back up. Um, the oil industry, every, and people don't realize how much oil is in absolutely everything there is, but um, it is. And um, so it's kicking back up. But the reason, I, the reason I'm saying this is when people go back to work, we got to, Remember, we got to do the, the righteous things that we learned and saw here during, the, during this illegal lockdown. Uh, we got to continue to do those same righteous things out there on the other side. Hallelujah. Well, here's a good word for you. It might not mean anything to you, but I just checked the rig count and the rigs have doubled. The number of drilling rigs have doubled here in, the, in uh, North Dakota. So all of you guys that have worked in the oil field out here, get yourself ready to get back out here because they're going to need the frat crews running and the flowback teams and the production team. And we declare, God bless America. Flow, baby, flow. <clears throat> now, what else we got? Believers Channels, COF. Um, everybody continually be praying for Brother Tanvir. Uh, Tanvir is, uh, he's a pastor there in, in Karachi, Pakistan. It's the monsoon season, so that's a severe situation. Remember this. <clears throat> the disciples were amazed at Jesus. They said, who is this? That even the winds and the waves obey him. I mean, they were... They were just, they were like, what is going on here? And they were shocked and amazed that Jesus could actually bind the storm. They, they were like, we are going to die. They were, that's it. It's all done. It's over. The storm is going to take. Of course, they were, most of them were fishermen. And so they, um, wow, trying to talk and do that same thing. Find that spot where they said that, please. Just one of the fishermen, or the, or the story of the great storm. But he, here's what they said. Who is this man? Well, that's the answer. He's the man, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Just like you and I are men and women, empowered by the Holy Spirit. So what does that mean? You and I have the ability to do the same thing that Jesus did. He came as an example of a man filled by the Holy Spirit. So I said that to pray for this situation in Pakistan. They're now in the monsoon season, which means torrential rain. Well, that's no different than just a rain cloud that's gotten out of line or a crowd of people that's gotten out of line. Luke 8. No matter how often you look in Luke 9 for Luke 8, it is just not there. All right, that's that's it. So, verse tears, put these verses in. Matthew 8, 23. Mark 4, 35. You can put them all in one line if you want. Matthew 8, 23. Mark 4, 35. And then right underneath of it, or with it, just put that statement. If we'll bind a violent 
crowd, we should bind a violent cloud. I really like that statement. For those of you that are hashtaggers, hashtag that thing everywhere. Bless a lot of people with it. What's the truth? That monsoon he's dealing with, where it's just torrential rain, that is just a storm that nobody's ever learned to control. Well, but pastor, they've been around for centuries, probably for millenniums. What's that mean? That means the devil's been allowed to run loose and tear things up and nobody stop it. One guy said, yeah, but that's an act of God. No, it's not. What part of God destroys anything? He doesn't destroy unless you're a wicked sinner. But God's not going to wipe out a good person's house to get to a sinner. I remember one time I asked my uh, pastor, I'm like, pastor, what about this? And he was, I was talking about protesters and people that were being wicked against other people. And he said, well, they're saying that is against people who accept sin. And that's why God's killing them. He said, do you think, you, do you think God knows where everyone lives that is doing wrong? I'm like, well, yeah, naturally. He said, well, is he taking them out? I said, um, no. He goes, well, then why would he take out the righteous for the wicked's deeds? That is not God's process. That's really good. See, that's one of those things that helps us come to an understanding of God. God's never going to destroy the righteous so he can get the wicked. Right. Whoops. I'm sorry. you. Uh, I got 13 righteous families there, but it's all right. I, at least I got the wicked. That's not our father. That's good. If we can rebuke the crowd, and, and, and I'm the one that said it, so I'll correct it. Since we can rebuke the crowd, <laughs> since we rebuke the violent crowd, we do rebuke the violent cloud. All right, I'm getting my words right, so keep praying for me. As the old preacher would say, Keep your prayers coming. I'll make it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's good to see you, Luann and Arlo. It's good to see you, Rob and Elisa. It's good to see you, Rebecca Smith. We're glad that you're with us tonight. God bless you and Christine and your families, Dan Cottle, Shannon, Tony. Amen. We got us quite a crowd here tonight. I like it. So that's all I got. For business at this point, I want to get into the word. I'm kind of chomping at the bit to get to the word of God for tonight. Now, we've been talking for the last week about being made in his image. Now, pretty soon, this revelation is going to get past our brain, the gray matter, and get all the way down inside of our heart. And make a huge difference on the inside of us. <laughs> so, here we go. We're going to go now to um, let's go to Let's go first to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And after that, we're headed to the book of Genesis, chapter 2. Here we go. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Look at this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, just say it, I am in Christ. So you can say, therefore, since I am in Christ, I am a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Now I'm going to post this in there. I'm going to give you an illustration of it. So there's the, there's the first. It says, 
Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. But I'm going to show you how I do this so that I can make these verses personal to me. Because the most important thing you're ever going to do as a Christian is make these verses personal with you. Now, I'll show you how I'm doing it. I'm going to put the two of them right alongside of each other. There we go. I got them. Now watch this. So the first one says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's the new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, old things have passed away. All things have become new. Now, verse 17 again. Since there, Therefore, since I am in Christ, I is a new creation. <laughs> okay, that's not good English, but I am a new creation. So what, what I did is just change it from an if to a since, and I put I in there instead of we or you. Therefore, since I am in Christ, I am a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. You could put your name in there. Therefore, since I, Watch this. There we go. I put my name in there. Hold on. Let me show you. Therefore, since I, Sam Cottle, am in Christ, I am a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Now, what does this have to do with what made in his image. Well, you and I are New, Cre New Testament believers. And in the Old Testament, at the beginning of time, Adam was created out of dirt. Jesus was out in the mud playing. And it blew into his, his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. Now, you ready for this? He made him out of mud. Say it with me. I'm some well-organized mud. You are some well-organized mud, love. <laughs> You're the bone, that's right. You're a very highly polished bone. Woo! Anyways, think about this. Inside of that mud from the Garden of Eden, God put in Adam's seed you and me. Ready? Right? And all billion people between me and Adam, between you and Adam, all those people were in Adam's seed when God put the mud together and said, and blew into his, his nostril the breath of life. Now that's amazing. That one See, one man. Think about it. Adam and Eve, seed and an egg, made Cain and Abel. Now, obviously, they more made they made more they they had more children than Cain and Abel because all of us are here. And Cain was marked, he was wicked. So Adam and Eve had other children. So Adam and Eve, seed, and egg came together and created another person. And inside that person is all of us. And inside them two people was all of us. And inside them people was all of us. And all of that came from one man's seed in the garden. Now, when you, when you start thinking about this, you have to look at it and say, my goodness sakes, God Almighty is really, 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 really huge. And he chose to come and be in man. Now, on uh, what was it? Saturday night? We, we were, Friday night, we, we did Genesis chapter 1. Saturday night, we went a whole different direction, but it was really good, made in his image, and it was a blessing to a lot of people. And then, now tonight we're in Genesis chapter 2. 
So say it in the New Testament. I am the new creation. No sin. Adam wasn't created with sin. You're a new creation. No sin. Now, do not hang up if you're like, oh, pastor, here you go on this thing again, and I just don't get it. Just sit tight. You're going to get it. You're going to love it. It's going to be a blessing to you. And when we get done, you're going to be shouting hallelujah because revelation knowledge is coming to you right now. In Jesus' name. Genesis chapter 1, and we're going to just begin reading, or Genesis 2, verse 1, we're going to just begin reading. Just come along with me and read. You ready? Then thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. Now, go back with me to Genesis 1, 31, and get this verse. God saw everything he made, and indeed... It was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Everything he made was very good. This whole earth and everything that's in it was very good. You ready for this? All of the natural resources that were here, all the gems, all the gold, all the silver, all the diamonds, wait, all the jasper and rubies and pearls and is that one that Dr. Winston or Dr. Uh, Sutton always talked about? Chrysolite? Chrysolite, yeah. <laughs> yeah. B Byzantium or something like that? You, you might, I don't even know what that is. Well, that's all the stuff that, according to the book of Revelations here, all of that was on this earth. And every bit of it was here designed for our use. God created this whole earth, and he said it was very good. Back to Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. If somebody will add those verses for us, please, I appreciate that. Genesis 2, 1. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. Now watch this. On the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified the seventh day because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. So we got three verses now that said God had gone to work and made some stuff like the world and all the universe. God had gone to work and made some stuff. Verse number four. I like this. This is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now you might not circle in your Bible, but I do. Circle the world, the word history. Have you ever noticed that it spells his story? History is his, God's story. Personally, I think it should be capitalized in every place in the Bible. But now the grammar, the grammatarians, what do you call them? Grammat grammatical ones? Marshall Lynn, welcome, sir. It's good to see you. God bless you guys. We're in verse 4. This is the history of the earth and the heaven when they were created. In the day the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, verse 5, before any plant of the field was in the earth, before any herb of the field had grown, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth, and there was no one to till the ground. Can you see that God needed a gardener? God needs a gardener. Who's the gardener? Say it. Esmil. That's Spanish. I don't know how to say it in French. You say it in French. It's me. Moi. Right. Verse 6. 
a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Now, I want you to get a picture of this. The book of Proverbs says the power of life and death is in our tongue. And God Almighty put in our tongue more creation and setting things in order than he did communication. Although communication is good between you and other people. But our words, like his words, were for creation and establishing his will on this earth. What's the enemy wants to get you to do? Every time you get in a battle, shut your mouth and don't say a word out of the word of God. If you speak his word, which is truth, God's word, which is truth, the enemy cannot defeat you. Because there's nothing our enemy has to defeat us. Well, he can't defeat you. The only power our enemy has is deception. That's all he's got. So even when Satan was kicked out of heaven by Jesus, Jesus gave him his number 979 kazillion boot. I mean, Jesus got a big foot. And he came out like lightning. But he, when he hit the earth, he didn't have anything but deception because he has no power unless a person gives him power over their life. Say it, I'll never give the enemy power over my life another day. Never another day. Never another day. Not another day. Verse 7. Wait, let's read 7 again. And God and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breast of life, and man became a living being. Boom. There he was. Adam was alive. Can you imagine what it was like? When Adam first opened his eyes. Huh? I mean, was God standing right in front of him? Aye. He just came out of mud, got the breath of life. Hi. Did he know how to say hi? Where did he get his intellect from? His spirit. His spirit was already alive. Think about this. God said, Let us make man. This is Genesis. Make sure we keep adding these verses. We're, we're, we're missing a couple of them. We need Genesis 2. 1, and then Genesis 1, 31, and then we're going to get another verse here. Um, but it does, it's okay. It, you might not be able to get to your computer and do it. That's why we always say, don't ever hesitate to add verses because it helps us keep this all flowing good. All right? Now we're going to Genesis. We're in Genesis 2, 7 now. 2, 7. And then from there, we're going to Genesis 1.26. Now watch this. I want you to see how this plays out. Because here is Adam, and he has a perfect relationship with God Almighty. Genesis 1.26 says, And man was created in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So, when God created Adam, in his image he was. Well, how much did God know? He knew it all. So, how much did Adam know? He, needed, he knew everything he needed to know was put on the inside of him when he was created. Get this picture. And he was made in the image of God and after his likeness. And God said... 
I'm going to bless you, and I give you, uh, you're going to be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth, take dominion, and replenish it. Now, Adam wasn't designed by God to make more worlds and universes. Adam was designed by God to take authority over this earth. Our position to speak his word is not to create new universes, but to bring this universe into subjection to the will of God. You ready? Thy, it's the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. So we'll add those verses. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 and 10 it are those verses about the Lord's Prayer. Say this, I am made in his image. I am made after his likeness. You said, I am made in his image. I am made after his likeness. You, you might want to just, wait, where's your cell phone? Now, we had this lesson one other time, and it was a very interesting lesson for a lot of people. But some of you don't realize that you have a really good mirror to look in right here in your cell phone. Just turn on the, your um, your uh, camera and just look at yourself. You can look real close if you need to. Take a picture and then you got a nice picture of yourself so you can check out your eyebrows or whatever. <laughs> I don't know what women look at. They just always have a mirror. But we love them. Anyways. We were made, you can pull that up and say, you, you might not think so, but I look just like God. See that? I look just like God. <laughs> Why? I was made in his image. And I was made after his likeness. And think about Adam and Eve. Perfect communion with our Father. Isn't that something? No sin. Wait, wait, there was no sin there. There was no, you ever had a bad boss that was just wicked, dumb, stupid, ignorant, and evil? Yeah. You ever have a boss that stole your money and didn't give it back to you? Yeah. You ever worked in absolutely atrocious working conditions? Yeah, well, been there. But that was not the case for Adam and Eve. They had the perfect environment, and it was called the Garden of Eden, and literally it says that God brought the seed from heaven and planted it on the earth. The seeds were literally from the kingdom of heaven. Anybody want to say it? I need some sweet corn from heaven. Amen. Amen. Verse 8. Here it is. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Where did he get the seed? From heaven. So we're in Genesis chapter 2, verse 8 now. You'll add that verse also. Genesis 2, 8. God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Now, think about this. The earth was without form and void, and then God spent six days saying, let there be, there was, it's good. Let there be, it was, there's, it's good. Let there be, it became, and it's good. Let there be, it became, and it's good. And, and I'm telling you, God is saying right now to you and I, declare on this earth, let there be life. And there is, and it's good. You know, some of you have, are able to come by for the noon prayer. And that's what we've been saying since March. Everywhere you go, speak life and life more abundantly. Why? Our words were just like Adam's word in that garden. And you and I are supposed to be speaking life everywhere we go right now here on this earth. Now, watch this. We're going now to verse number nine. Out of the ground, the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to sight. I like that idea. How about you? I like trees that are pleasant to my sight. You know, um, what's that big one they got in uh, Kentucky? 
Um, magnolia. Oh, them are some beautiful trees right there. Beautiful, beautiful trees. And um, in Kentucky, we had um, honeysuckle. That wasn't a tree. That was a vine. And that honeysuckle would start growing in the spring. And that honeysuckle would go. It waft on the breeze down through the holler. Woo, Jesus. Phyllis Raymond, welcome, ma'am. Glad to have you. We are in Genesis 2, verse 9. Out of, and out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and is good for food. Two different things. Good to look at and good to eat. Sister Vamala today had a picture of these big bean-looking things that they got off a tree over there. And they eat them. Oh, Jesus. It looks really good. It looked really good. All right. And in the midst of the garden, this is verse 9, the tree of life was in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Two trees in the Bible, or two trees in the garden. So what were they? The tree of life, eat of that tree, you never die, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. All right? Now, this thing's getting interesting because God's put the man there to tend and keep it. Say it. He was a gardener. He was a gardener. Man's a gardener. All right? Verse 10. Now a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from there it parted and became four river heads. The name of the first is Pison. All right? It is the one which skirts the land of Havilah, where there is gold. Brother Tanvir... Sister Elisa Craig, welcome, guys. Everybody say gold. I like gold. I like gold. I think I need a bunch of gold. People are like, why do you need gold? Well, this paper money is losing its value, and that gold, it don't ever lose its value. Here we go. All right, we're in verse 12 now. And the gold of that land is good. It's not just it's not just gold, it's good. Well, look at here. Bedellium and onyx stones are there. You think I've ever seen bedellium? Have you? All right. Anybody that has a picture of bedellium, please add it. <laughs> All right, verse 13. The name of the second river is, is Gihon or Gihon. It's the one which goes around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is the Hittichel. It's the one which goes toward the east of Assyria. The fourth river is the Euphrates. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and keep it. What was Adam's job? Tend and keep, tend and keep, tend and keep. What is our job today on this earth? Tend and keep. Today, if you want to do it, now you, you might not be able to do it in your Bible, but I can. I can draw me a straight line right over there. From tend and keep to be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth, take dominion. Because here's why this is such an important thing to teach us. If you and I have the opinion that we're just here to suffer until Jesus finally decides Sometime, either pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, somewhere. Somewhere I'm going to finally get to heaven. We got the wrong opinion of why we're here. Because you and I are here right now on August 10th, 2020, for one reason. Be fruitful, multiply, subdue this earth, take dominion, tend and keep. Say it. I'm the gardener. You might be like, Brother Samuel, I don't even have a garden. Well, we do, but that's not a big one. We're, we can get the kale off it, but we can't seem to get too many <coughs> tomatoes or peppers. Beans. Peas just, the peas just something. But we're on the second floor on the deck, so, you know, 
That's our guard. But anyways, our place on this earth, be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth, take dominion. It's in Genesis 1, 26. Matter of fact, let's do that. Let's put Genesis 2, 15 and Genesis 1, 26 in the same line and put them together. Why? That is the answer why you and I are here on this earth. You might say, but Brother Samuel, I'm called by God to be a singer. Okay, the earth needs singers. We need rock and roll. Woo! We need worshipers. Um, Genesis 126 and Genesis 215. So what are you? You're a tender and a keeper. You are someone that is here on purpose by God. Be fruitful. Multiply, subdue the earth, take dominion. That is your purpose on this earth. But isn't it just so much easier to watch TV? Well, yeah, but you ready? There's coming a day when we're going to stand before God and he's going to say, did you do anything and get anything accomplished on the earth? And we're going to have to look at him and say, uh, yes or no. And so we might as well get down to the basics because here's the blessing of the basic. When we get into Genesis 1.26, we get the blessing of God Almighty on our life. Because it says that God blessed him. You got to see it. God blessed him. Verse 28, actually. But it's all the same thing. And God blessed them and said, Be fruitful, multiply, subdue this earth, and take dominion. That is our responsibility on this earth, right here, right now, tonight. Be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth, and take dominion. But, but, but Brother Dr. Reverend Samuel, I just want to go to church. And just sing some songs and hear a message. Well, you can do that. But here's the reality. When you get to heaven, God our Father, actually, you're born again, so you'll miss the great white throne judgment and go straight to the judgment seat of Christ. If you noticed, I, put, I made a post on my personal page about judgment. It is important to understand if you're born again, you don't ever go to the white throne judgment. You, you go first to the judgment seat of Christ, where Christ is judging those who are believers. He's separating the sheep from the goats, and the sheep get to go in, and the goats go back to be with the rest of them. But at the judgment seat of Christ, we will be judged for our works. They will be tried by fire. Whatever's left is what our crown is going to look like in heaven. And the crown in heaven is what we present at the feet of Jesus on that day when we cast our crowns before him. Amen. So, let me just see if I can grab that. Our works are going to be tried by fire. I believe that that is found in um, first, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Did I get it? I'm going to put those. 1 Corinthians 3.13 was not there. Missed it. That's all right. Here we go. Why don't you come look at this verse with me? 1 Corinthians 3, 13. Um, let's go to uh, let's go to verse 9 and just read this. 1 Corinthians 3, 9. For we are God's fellow workers. Say it with me. I'm working with God. 
You are God's field and you are God's building. So you're a worker, a field, and a building. You're a little bit of everything here. And Paul also called us a tapestry, that which is knitted together. 10. According to the grace of God, which is given to me as a wise master builder, I laid the foundation. Another builds on it. Let each one take heed how he builds. You're building right now a foundation of your life. You are going to live forever. It only makes sense to be a wise steward right now planning for your future. How many people are continually thinking about their retirement? What's the first thing you ask when you start working for a company? Do you have a retirement plan? Do you have a 401k, a 501c3, a 1375w? I don't know what you call them. All the bottom line is, do you got a retirement program for me? If I give you my whole life, can you give me something in return? Well, think about this. People spend... 40 years of their life working a job, preparing for their last few years on this earth, and never once think about eternity. If you live to be 120, which God promised, what is 120 years compared to Abraham, who's 5,000 years old? Um, you're just a kid. You're just a kid. So it would be, it would, <laughs> to King James word, it would behoove us to say, hold it. What do I got to do to be ready for eternity so that when I get over there, I receive the reward in eternity that I want to receive? Now, see, we're back here in Genesis studying the beginning and Adam's perfect relationship. And the purpose of studying that is so that you and I can see the relationship we have with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us. You ready? Whose temple we are. Say it. I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. The of the Holy Ghost. And according to verse number 10, I am a building and I'm a field. <laughs> so, hallelujah. Let's keep going. Verse, verse 11, no other foundation can anyone lay, which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Now, 12, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and straw, each one's work will become clear for the day. Did you notice the word day is capitalized? For the day of the Lord will declare, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. You might say, Brother Samuel, I'm just getting used to being a Christian. What are you telling me now? Listen, I'm not telling you anything I haven't told you. I'm giving you another picture of who you are to a greater degree so that you can reach out and become so much more on this earth. Think about what faith will do. We studied it Sunday. Doctor, doctor. <laughs> God spoke to Dr. Roberts to drive down this road and stand in the field. And he did. He said, what am I here? He said, build me a university. Dr. Roberts said, I don't know nothing about universities. He was a preacher. But God said, I'll teach you. He said, well, you're going to have to. <laughs> and yet look at it today. A billion dollar organization or Roberts University. That is one of the leading universities in the city, in the nation, in the state of Oklahoma. Started by a man of God who didn't know nothing, went and stood in the field and God said, build me a Build me a deal. Well, you might say, well, brother, I'm not Dr. Roberts. No, you're not. But God's got a mission for you to do on this earth 
so that when you get to the other side, you got crowds. Am I making sense tonight? Is it making sense? I don't know. I'm just going to give everybody a hug. Maybe that'll make them all feel better. Now, let's keep reading. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he'll receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved. Yet so as through fire. Verse 16. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. He dwells in you. If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, whose temple you are. Now, I want to make sure we get this. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 5.5. 5. Wow. I didn't want that one. 1 Corinthians 1 14. That wasn't the verse I was looking for. 1 Corinthians 1 14. As you also have understood us in part, that we are your boast as you also are ours in the day of the Lord Jesus. Now, I read that whole verse for that one phrase. In the day of the Lord Jesus. There's coming a day when you and I will give an account of our life. Now, here's the cool thing about all this. Matter of fact, add it. Add this verse. 1 Corinthians eleven thirty one. Anybody know what that one says? 11.31. Whoops, did I say the wrong one? No, that's right. 1 Corinthians 11.31. I got it out of a setting, though. If we judge ourselves, we will not be judged. So what's the purpose of everything you just showed us, Brother Sam? So that you see... Heaven is not just a bunch of clouds to sit on and play a harp. No. You honestly think we're going to sit on a harp, on a cloud and with a harp for the next eight zillion years. That's not the case. God has never been the God that did nothing. Wait, the great cloud of witnesses in heaven. In Hebrews chapter 11 ain't sitting up there doing nothing. So what we got to realize is, hold it. This heaven thing means I better get prepared on this earth. Can you imagine getting to heaven and you're kneeling right alongside of the head toilet cleaner? For the biggest church in the world and he took that toilet cleaning job on as his ministry and said this is as important as the greatest evangelist job in the whole world to keep the toilets clean and you you kneel down next to him he's got this crown it's this huge and you look at him you're like how do you even balance that on your head dude and he's like i'm made in his image Right? And you got a Burger King hat. He'll look at you and say, all you is a lazy Christian, huh? <laughs> Wait. I want you to see this. I want you to get this picture. We're getting ready to go back to um, Genesis chapter 2, but I want you to see this picture. It's not whether or not you got the important job because some of you Come here every night, and to you, 
that is a duty by God, that is a responsibility by God, that is a crown, no, a jewel in your crown because when you come here, you make a beautiful atmosphere for everybody else to come in and say, wow, look at this thing running. It's just running as smooth as silk. Every one of you that add a verse, every one of you that helps us make this diligent, in your crown in heaven is a jewel for every person that this community of faith has ever touched and ever will touch in the future. Can I get an amen out of anybody? Amen, amen, amen. Wait, I, I, I want you to get it. Some of you, your fruitful multiply, subdue the earth and take dominion. Part of it's right here helping us do this. And every time you show up and help us do this, you're getting a bigger jewel in your crown. Well, pastor, I don't go to heaven for a crown or a jewel. You better. Because that's what you lay at Jesus' feet. And say, here's my righteous deeds on the earth. And what is it? Be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth, take dominion, replenish. This is a really good teaching to me. If I don't say so myself. Genesis chapter 2. See, some people are like, well, but I don't have an important job. Wait a minute. Do you know how important a job it is to get these verses in here? Do you know how some somebody, somebody that's a part of this, you know how to edit stuff. Or... You could learn how to edit. And what you don't realize is the most valuable thing that can be done for me right now is somebody that says, I'll take that on as if that's my ministry, Pastor, and I'll help you get that done with great excellence. You know what that does? That makes everything we do look better. That makes the gospel more accessible. That makes us look more excellent. And that is one of the most important positions you'll ever be in. I'm going to tell you a story. <clears throat> the man's name is Keith Moore. M-O-O-R-E. He's a pastor in Branson, Missouri. A wonderful man of God. Wonderful man of God. And he was just a good old boy, good old Missouri boy with his four-wheel drive truck, his wife and his dog living in a trailer park. Got saved, got born again. What was his, his thing he did? He was in Taekwondo. He was determined to be the best taekwondo wherever you call him, in the whole world. Don't they call them dodos or something? Martial artists. Martial artists. Marshall and Renee are here. I didn't know they were artists, though. <laughs> they, right. are. they are I've artists. Yeah. Anyways, so he's he's getting ready to go around the world and find the greatest, most in, intelligent, most powerful guy that's ever done it. God gets him born again and says, I want you to go to Ramah, where, at, which is Dr. Kenneth Hagin's school. He gets there and he's like, well, all right, if I'm going to be a preacher, then I'm going to be the best there is, and I need you to take me to the best there is. And he literally became Brother Hagin's healing school director. And then his next job for Brother Hagin was to listen to every tape he had to see if there was errors and to make sure they could edit out things that needed to be edited out. Now, it was a job for him. He got paid. You could go in depressed. And say, I got this job. And all I got to do all day long is listen to preachers. But what happened? Is he listened to over 3,000 messages. Faith comes how? By hearing. by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. That man's got one of the most amazing ministries of this day. Matter of fact, has two churches. 
has one in Florida and one in Branson, Missouri. God gave him, gave him, gave him a jet to fly between the two. Yep. Why? Because God wants that work done the way he does it. When you call Keith Moore's ministry, you don't have to pay to get a CD or DVD set. He gives it to you free of charge. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why? Because he was faithful to the task of listening to everything that Brother Hagin made. Why are you saying all this, Brother Samuel? Because this is where people miss it in the kingdom. Is they say, well, there's just nothing for me to do. Oh, man, there's all kinds of stuff to do. Even though we're a thousand miles apart. <laughs> Woo! I look at this and say, how in the world are we doing this? How are we doing this? But that's the glory of it. Because this way, this way comes right down to the purest intentions. You helping us and we helping you. And listen, this is our part of being fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth, take dominion. Is it really 1018? Goodness sakes alive. We just got started. You know how far we've got to go yet? <laughs> Genesis chapter 2. Let's get busy. Verse 15. The Lord God took the man, put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and keep it. Now, I wonder if he did that before he made him or after he made him or if he made him in the garden or if he made him over here and was like, watch this. Woo! <laughs> I actually do that. Actually, I'll take coffee. Sixteen. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. Now watch this. All right? But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, don't eat of that tree. I want you to, if you don't, if you if you can, if you got room, just right next to it. That's the tithe. Every they may freely eat of every tree, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God said, it's all yours. Keep this one holy for me. That's what the tithe is. All of it's yours. Keep this part for me. You can see the tithe right in the garden. All right? Verse 18, the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. All of you women, here's where you come in. That's why sometimes you just shake your head at us husbands and say, Lord Jesus, what would this guy do if he was all by himself? Verse 18 is the answer to that. <laughs> God looked down out of heaven and said, <clears throat> this guy cannot do this by himself. So he made all you ladies. It is not good for you to be alone. If you're alone, ladies, God's got a man for you if you want one. Women, men. If you're alone, God's got a woman for you. Pastor, I saw people get divorced. So did I. I've seen it. Yep. <laughs> Been there, done that. Don't. But that don't mean that marriage is wrong. I don't know. Say it. Verse 18. It is not good for man to be alone. So what did he do? Verse 8, 19. Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever he would call them, that's what their name would be. All right? Verse 20. Adam gave names to all the cattle, to the birds of the air. I mean, Adam's the one that said Palatopus. <laughs> Spell that one. Every beast of the field. For Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. <clears throat> Ladies, say it. I am a helper comparable to him. That's who you are. And God said it's not good for man to be alone, so he made him a helper comparable to him. Verse 21, 
And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. <clears throat> and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Well, guess what? Man's been eating ribs ever since, trying to get that one back. Yes, he has. Saying, oh, Jesus, I need my rib back. Well, 22. The rib which the Lord took from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And the man said, whoa, man, and called her woman. This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Break the word woman down. Man with a womb. A helper comparable. The woman was the womb to give life and bring life to this earth. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed in the garden. Now think about this. God Almighty designed this whole thing this way. I want you to think about this. Say this with me. Be fruitful. Multiply. Subdue the earth. Take dominion. Replenish. You notice that there's nowhere in there where God said, take dominion over man. That's, that's where man gets it wrong every time. Is when man tries to control man. What'd you say, fellas? I would say, I would say you're 1,500 miles away. More might be like 1,800 miles away, Phyllis. And yet here we are, all of us doing it, doing this together. And Phyllis, you're as important as every one of these other people. You are, you are as much a part of who we are as any of us here. Thank you. And I honor you for that in Jesus' name. And all the people that come with you, all your friends that are here, God bless you for being a woman of God like you are. In the name of Jesus. Now, thank you, my helpmate, my wife, my one comparable to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Get this picture. People say all the time, men say, women, you can't live with them and you can't live without them. Women say, Men, you can't live with them, and you can't live without them. But see, those statements are statements that actually go against this book. Anytime you hear somebody say, men, quit trying to figure out women. There's no way you will. Hold it. Hold it. God created man in his image and after his likeness. Do you think God has women plan figured out? <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> it's a really, there's a really bad joke about that, about a bridge to Hawaii. I don't remember it, so I'll slaughter it if I try it. It won't be funny. <laughs> Wait a minute. Think about I want Really, seriously, think about this. God said, be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth, take dominion, replenish. We get in the New Testament. He said, be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth, take dominion, replenish. I have filled you with my Holy Spirit. Go about doing good, healing all who are oppressed by de the deception of the devil. So we got, we got all this authority. We are the very hands and feet of God. We got all the authority in the world. 
and we can't figure out each other. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys heard what she said, but but wait, the power of life and death is where? Right here. How many times have you said, you ain't never going to figure out your wife, guys? What does God have to let you do? He's got to let you do that. And what I say to us, all the time I say, the two of us have become one. It's impossible not to figure each other out. Amen. Paul said, grace and peace be multiplied to you. That means between us, grace and peace. Rome, uh, Rome, Rome. Revelation 12, 12 or 13 says, The accuser of the brethren is cast down. His name is Satan. Not me. Uh, men, it's a tough one. You better get it. Women, get it. You're not the accuser of the brethren, brother, brother, husband. Woo! <laughs> We, we started out talking about being in the garden and we got to a marriage conference. No, see, the power of life and death is in our tongue. And what are we saying? Because what we say is what we're going to harvest. Remember what Adam did? Everything that came to him, whatever he called it is what his name was. Ready? Whatever's coming at you, whatever you call it, it's what it's going to be. Huh? Oh, my goodness. This pandemic thing has gone so long, it's just going to destroy everything. No, it is not. I meet these guys out there all the time. The oil field's gone. It's done. It's over now for another year and a half. No. Flow, baby, flow. And you know what? Were you in here when I read it? The rig count got all the way down to six at the lowest point. It's at 12 today. That means we've doubled the number of rigs. Now, follow me. I just, just listen. That means there's about um, each rig has, how many did I say was in each rig? Like 80 people. I think it was 80 people. Each rig takes 80 people to run. I think it's what it is. Plus all the auxiliary businesses that's around it. All right. So you got truck drivers. You got you got all kinds of equipment people, dirt people, mud people, cement people, chemical people, uh, uh, pipe people. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff coming in. Now, now follow this statement. <clears throat> So then they get done, and when they move that rig to another site, then comes the frack crew. Now that frack crew takes 80 people. That frack crew takes that many more trucks. So literally, just by six more rigs, we've added another 300 jobs here. Just like that. <clears throat> I can hear people. I'm telling my son to get to North Dakota and get a job. Listen, to see for me to just see that that number doubled, that means, it, you know, if you were with us at lunch, we were out there speaking over those rigs for neighbors. Well, that's a great company. And um, you send somebody up here that's willing to go to work in the oil field, and not worry about a mask and all that nonsense. That's a good job. I don't know what they're paying now, but they were paying really good money before the, the pandemic. Last week, there was, if you can, if you got skilled, if you're skilled hauling uh, uh, liquid oil, they were 200 loads behind every day. That's a lot of, that's a lot of loads. When an average an, an average guy is gonna is gonna be able to haul maybe five or six, depending on how short the run is, maybe ten. Pastor, are we talking about God or North Dakota? The idea is 
We've not stopped taking dominion. We've never stopped since this thing went into this, even before it to say, I command this thing to go. Now, when you and I do that all day long, you might say, it doesn't seem like anything big. Wait, the greatest thing you can do is speak the word of God. Be fruitful, multiply, subdue this earth, take dominion, replenish. Drive through your community. If you're bored sitting at the house and they don't have them weird, stupid people standing in the middle of the expressway trying to stop you, don't drive on one of them roads. Uh, driver, if you got one of them loops that go all the way around your city on an expressway, get out there and drive at that and spend the whole hour praying in the spirit, pointing your finger at your city saying, go, go, life, life, life. Why? Because it's, it's you being an atomite on this earth. Now, this is where you got to go back and study all these messages. This is why I got to have you who are the editors to help me get it edited. Because now we can send people back to the other messages and say, wait, go back and learn about your responsibility with Adam, with Abraham, and after Noah came out of the ark, after Jesus went to, died and the veil of the temple was rent in twain. See your place on this earth. Because as soon as you see it, and you realize, I'm going to build myself an eternity. Not a retirement for 20 years. An eternity. What you're going to end up having is an earthly retirement, if he waits that long, that is out of this world. That was quite the pun, wasn't it? So let me ask the question like I always do. Is this making sense? Yes. If it's not making sense, somebody ask a question. Because I want to really, my purpose, my purpose by God in teaching this is to say, do you realize that the almighty God who created heaven and earth lives inside of you adam and eve were in the garden there was no sin there was nothing there say it they were a perfect creation they had perfect communication with almighty god there's two more hashtags right there hashtag perfect creation perfect communication Woo! hashtag it hallelujah see the reason this is so important, truly, the reason this is so important is because otherwise you'll just see yourself as a religious person that goes to the cute little church over on the corner and thank God for our sweet little pastor. You know, he's, he's something else, but it, we love him. You know how it is. We love him. He's, he's all right. We love him. No, but see, that's not that's not God. God needs every one of us absolutely revolutionizing our communities and our world that we live in. And you can by this right here, by your lips, by the words you speak. You might say, I don't feel like anything's being accomplished. Well, number one, don't go by your feelings. Go by the word. Amen. Say somebody shout it. Matter of fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it in. Because I, I enjoy doing this right while I'm talking. Watch this one. Oh, Jesus, what is that? That did not need to happen like that. But I was just trying to get over here to do that. And then it jumped over there and did that. I love the word of God. Hallelujah. 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 
Now, here's, here's the revelation. You are called by God right now to reach your world where you live. Like, like um, Phyllis said, she lives 1,500 miles away from us. But can you imagine every time we connect North Dakota, she lives in Mississippi, right? I think so. And Mississippi? Guess what? That means there's a line between North Dakota, we're over here in Mississippi, down here. Everybody underneath that line? Yep. The anointing got all over them. The blessing of the Lord got all over them. The word of God got all over them right while they're going down that down that line. All of you in Michigan. Sister Sister uh, Elisa down there in, in um, Texas. Brother Mike in San Antonio. And what are we doing? We're sending down this line the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow with it. And the sooner we grab a hold of it and realize, hold it, I got a place of dominion on this earth. I can control my whole community. Yeah, yeah. That's what this is teaching. Wait, slow down. That's what this is teaching. To build a power grid of many people who are in agreement and and getting the prayer thing accomplished. Now, let me give you a story. It's not mine. It's, it's Dr. Winston's story, but it's a good story. When he first started his church there in, um, in I don't know, the Chicago area somewhere, he was in a really rough part of town. And God sent him there in that part of town on purpose. And so he's in there. He had a little storefront church. He's in there one day. And a lady comes busting through the door and said, I need to see the pastor. And he's like, I'm the pastor. What do you need? She goes, the drug dealers have taken over our community. My kids can't go out of the house because we're all afraid. They come out in the morning. They don't leave till midnight. So we're just all bound down in fear. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> she came to the right place. She didn't come to the police officer. She came to the man of God. He said, I don't know. Let's join hands. They joined hands. They began to pray in the spirit. What is, he said, what am I doing? I'm checking with headquarters. What do I tell this lady to do? He said, after a few minutes of praying, he said, I looked at her and said, lady, here's what you do. Here's a vial of oil, anointing oil. I want you to take this. And pour it right down the center of your street from one block to the other. She grabbed that thing and ran out the door. She didn't hesitate. You ready? Came back two days later and said, you will never believe it. He said, of course I believe it. We asked God what to do. He told us what to do. We went and did it and bam, there it is. She said they came out once the next day about noon was there for about a half an hour, and they've left and never came back. Why? One person stood up in their community and said, no more, prayed in the Holy Ghost and said, God, what do we do? God gave them a plan, they did it, and it worked. Wait, that's for you, whether you live in Cowsville or Dowsville. It don't matter. Every community has got something that needs to be dealt with. And... And if you can, if, if your community is a nice community and everything's just cool and happy, well then pray for your capital in your state because they need a lot of prayer. And if that's all cool in your state, South Dakota's got an excellent governor and them people are doing it. Matter of fact, the, the Sturgis bike rally is going on right now. I'll bet you they got more people at that Sturgis bike rally than South Dakota's seen in a long time because everybody's all bound up haven't been able to go do anything. Yeah. And that lady was smart. Oh, yeah, well, wear a mask if you want to. Don't if you don't. But you are an intelligent American. Come here and act intelligent. And that thing's going on. And you can guarantee in the, in the state of North or South Dakota right now, this week, there's a serious amount of money flowing in that place with them bikers. And it's a beautiful place. And then go see um, 
what do you call it, Mount Rushmore and all the different parks. And they'll they'll be up here in, in North Dakota by us. We're like five hours away and they ride their bikes all the way up here, all over this place. See them every day. And, and see, you can bless your state. And that's why we do this noon prayer thing. You might say, Pastor, I, I just don't feel like we're moving anything. Remember, it's not about feeling. It's about action. Are we speaking this word? His word cannot return void. It must accomplish the purpose for which it was sent. And if you've not read Psalm 109 lately, somebody type it in there, please. Psalm 109, it's the whole chapter, 31 verses. I encourage you to read it because, matter of fact, I encourage you to read it out loud every day and put the name of your capital in it and put the name of your state in there. And you get serious with God and pray in Psalm 109 every day. Because there are some wicked, wicked, wicked people. And if you aren't praying for President Trump to totally crush the corruption in Washington, D.C., you are confused. Well, I don't like him. Well, you ought to. Wait a minute. Listen to me. He has got what? This is August. He's got September, October, November, and December. He's got four months left. He he needs to, you and I need to pray so he pulls out every stop and exposes every bit of corruption in Washington, D.C., in our business, in our corporate, in our in Wall Street, in every area, and he just just ferociously, righteously stands up and drains a swamp just like he said he was going to do. Well, I don't know if I want to pray for him. Well, that's just ridiculous. You, you might not like the guy, but pray that he gets bolder than he's ever been. Yeah, but that ain't right. You didn't hire a pastor. You hired a president. He's not leading the sheep. He's keeping out the wolves. Anyways, this is the purpose of what I'm saying. Pray that God will give him the ability to crush corruption. Corruption. Not good people. The corrupted. Amen. This whole pedophile thing. That ought to be keeping every one of us awake every night. All over this world. I don't know. Maybe the number is in the millions of kids that have been missing and have been sold as sex slaves. Are you kidding me? Be fruitful, multiply, subdue this earth, take dominion. That's what we've got to be praying for. You got a lot of work to do. There ain't a single one of us that can sit around all day and do nothing. Because on the other side, God's going to say, did you stand against this wickedness with your tongue and your mouth? And you won't be able to look at Jehovah God and say, um, I didn't know how. That don't work in heaven. You got one of these. Look, look, you got one of these. He's willing to sit here and teach you the word of God. And teach it to you simply, teach it to you in love, no condemnation. If you got a question, ask it, no confusion. And we're going to take this thing to the next level in Jesus' that mighty name. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, what our prayers are doing, they're working. Every one of these governors and senators who have defied God Almighty and the church, it's just days. Their, their days are done. Their days are done. Why? Why? You defy God. You defy God. Or the CNN newscaster. America no longer needs God or church. Well, that was dumb. His life is done. That's stupid. That's how it is. Ask Saul 
ask Goliath, ask every one of those people that stood against God and his people. Nebuchadnezzar, Belteshazzar, every one of them. Pharaoh, Pharaoh was the greatest nation in the whole world. God crushed him and then drowned him. Yep, his pride and his arrogance. At, wait, I don't want it to happen, people, any more than you do. But you're going to rape a little child exactly. as a politician? And you don't think you're going to have that kind of destruction come to you? Hello? In the name of Jesus. Hmm. This has been an interesting night, hasn't it? Character. Nobody's, nobody's saying amen too much. Everybody's saying, hmm. <laughs> so I'll give everybody a hug. See if everybody will feel better. Well, you know, the cool thing about our message that we preach tonight is you have a specific place on this earth that you got to get accomplished. You and I have come to the understanding through our time of prayer that it is a place of authority and dominion. It truly is. It truly is a place of authority and dominion on this earth. And the only way, what you can do, take your gun and go shoot somebody? No. You gotta use this weapon. Right here. Use that weapon and use this weapon. And we're teaching you how to do it in Jesus' mighty name. Is that a good place to stop? All right, everybody remember, we stopped at Genesis 3.1. So when we come back tomorrow night, we're going to be coming back at it. We got Adam and Eve in the garden in a perfect relationship with Almighty God. You and I have been made new creations. Say, it, I have a perfect relationship with Almighty God. Everybody say, it. I have a perfect relationship with Almighty God because He lives in me. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Let's pray and we'll receive communion together. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now. Right now, Lord. I've spoken your word, you gave me to speak. I have. We added the verses you said to add. We love your care for us, your children. We're not just sheep. We're not just servants. We are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus. And we have a place on this earth. And that place is to be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth, and take dominion. That place is to bring your kingdom to this earth. That place is to go about doing good, healing all who are oppressed of the devil. And do it in love. And do it in peace. And do it in joy. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Bless every person within the sound of my voice, Jesus. Bless him. May this message make sense. May the revelation of who you are inside of us go down so deep in our lives. In Jesus' mighty, awesome, wonderful, holy name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And amen. And amen. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Elisa. That's a perfect post. Now, see, some of you have the same idea of the things that she just posted like that. You're welcome to put it in. And the more of it that happens, the more, the more blessed and expanded this message gets. In Jesus' mighty name. Here we go. Somebody add the communion verses? Please. Please. Somebody add the communion verses, please. I 
And then we'll receive communion and we'll be done. I, I value every one of you that's here. I really do. I value your relationship with God. I value your friendship that we have with you here, Ann and I. Those of you who are have been in the class, the Grace to Grace class, um, you will have something within the next day. And you'll have an explanation. Thank you for being a part of it. We're moving from glory to glory, from grace to grace, from faith to faith. And Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Here's the Apostle Paul. You ready? I command this thing works like it's supposed to. Amen. Like the one guy said, he had Gatorade in him. Cheese it. Jesus turned the water into wine. Let us know whether you had dark grape juice in this miracle or light. We want to know, Lisa. I believe it in Jesus' mighty name. I believe it. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that on the same night in which he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took the bread, and when he had broke it, he blessed it and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Of me. Verse 26. For as often as you eat this bread, and as often as you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's redemptive work until he comes. Verse 28. Let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Verse 31. If we judge ourselves, we would not be judged by the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your broken body and your blood that was shed for us. May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. And now, this is our tradition. This is what we do. No matter who you are, that's listening, jump up, go get some grape juice, bread, crackers, water, whatever you got, so you can be a part of this. You might say, Brother Samuel, I'm not a part of your, your, your ministry like that. Well, are you a part of Jesus? Because that's the only thing that matters, is that you're a part of Jesus. And if you are, then you can receive communion. If you're not, Pray the prayer with us. We're going to pray a prayer of self-examination and receiving Jesus. And when you get done with that prayer, you will be right with God and ready to receive. Any of you that say, I don't know, they teach me about this damnation thing. No, listen. The answer so you're not in damnation is to receive the juice, the bread, and the, and the, and the broken body. The broken body and the blood of Jesus. Now, Paul said that for people that were just fooling around with it. But you're not here fooling around. If you're here, you're here on purpose. Therefore, when we pray this prayer, pray it. You're right with God. And the answer is, pray and say, God, I need you. 
and that makes you worthy to receive in Jesus mighty name and if you don't believe me then when we're done open your Bible and study it study it out get your Bible commentary and study it out get you a, a Bible app e-sword.net e-sword esword.net it's a great Bible app it'll help you be able to search up specific words in Jesus mighty name Shall we pray? Yep. You know, that's another job you have. Hmm. Assistant prayer. <laughs> Echo. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. I know I need Jesus in my life. I know I need Jesus in my life. In every area. In every area. In everything I do. In everything I do. Jesus, I receive you. Jesus, I receive you. And all your power. And all your power. And yet in this simplicity. And yet in this simplicity. I know you give me the power. I know you give me the power. To become a child of God. To become a child of God. And I receive it right now. And I receive you right now. According to John 3.16. According to John 3.16. I believe in your name. I believe in your name. And you give me everlasting life. And you give me everlasting life. And I thank you. And I thank you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. So I live in power. So I live in power. And understand your holy word. And understand your holy Pray word. in my heavenly language. Pray in my heavenly language. And live a successful life. And live a successful life. As a believer every day. As a believer every day. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family. One of our members will put my email address in there. Send me an email. Let me know what's going on. You can message me right here through um, the Community of Faith page. You can go to my personal Facebook page and send me a message in Messenger. I want to know what's going on in your life. Give us a testimony. Tell us what's happening because things are happening with this gathering of believers right here. We want to be a blessing to you. Thank you, Elisa, for your help with that. This is the truth. We love you. And anything within our power that we can do for you, we'll help you do that. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, let's pray over the animals. Ready? Pray this with me. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. I receive these elements. I receive these elements. I sanctify them for this time of communion. I sanctify them for this time of communion. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And now let's pray over the bread. You were wounded. You were wounded. For my transgression. For my transgression. You were bruised. You were bruised. For my iniquity. For my iniquity. The chastisement for my peace. The chastisement for my peace. Is upon you, Lord. Is upon you, Lord. And by your stripes I am healed. And by your stripes I am healed. In my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. In my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. In my mind, my will, and my emotions. In my mind, my will, and my emotions. Nothing missing. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Nothing broken. Every joint supplying. Every joint supplying. In my body. In my body. From your body. From your body. In the body of Christ in my community. In the body of Christ in my community. And right here in this community of faith. And right here in this community of faith. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. Let's receive the bread together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your blessing in our lives of your broken body. 
you did it all for us. And we thank you. And we thank you. Now we lift up the cup of blessing. The blood of Jesus. Pray this prayer with me. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I have been redeemed. I have been redeemed. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I have reconciliation. I have reconciliation. With you, my Father. With you, my Father. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Every sin. Every sin. Is placed in remission. Is placed in remission. In my life. In my life. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. And I'm a new creation. And I am a new creation. Created in Christ Jesus. Created in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. Old things have passed away. And everything in my life. And everything in my life. Is brand new. Is brand new. And I thank you for it. And I thank you for it. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I come boldly. I come boldly. To the throne room of grace. To the throne room of Where grace. I find grace. Mercy and help. I find grace, mercy, and help. For my assignment every day. For my assignment every day. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I overcome. I overcome. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. The accuser of the brethren. The accuser of the brethren. Is cast down. Is cast down. And I have no condemnation. And I have no condemnation. In my life. In my life. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. My conscience is pure. Conscience is pure. My robes made white. My robes made white. I will always be. I will always the be glorious church. The glorious church. Without spot, wrinkle, or any other blemish. Without spot, wrinkle, or any other blemish. When you come for me. When you come for me. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Let's receive the juice together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, I <clears throat> always want to sing when we get done. I, uh, But I want to make a hashtag real quick. Everybody, hang on. I saw Brother Tambir put that in there, and I'm like, I'm going to make that a hashtag. Huh. Sure would be nice if they popped up out there and the rest of it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Ready? Let's sing. Let's sing, um, I want to sing Andre Crouch's song again. We call it. This one right here. The blood that Jesus shed for me. Now we're going to put a little more soul in it this time. It's in the comments. You work right, computer. There we go. The blood, nope, too high. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose. It's power, it reaches to the highest mountain, it flows to the lowest valley, the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. It soothes my doubts and calms my fears. 
and it dries all my tears. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never its power it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. It will never lose its power. Well, guys, I think that's all we got for tonight. I think that was a good night. I think it was a really, really good night. Say this with me. I have a responsibility on this earth to change my world. You have a responsibility. Every single one of us have a responsibility on this earth. And, you know, this might be a new doctrine to you. You might say, yeah, but Brother Dr. Reverend Pastor, I didn't ever hear anybody ever teach this. Well, I apologize for them that they didn't help you see the reality of the truth of the kingdom of God. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Well, if, if that's the case, then that means this. If the gates of hell can't prevail against us, that means we got to be out there just totally taking authority and dominion on this earth. Well, and the reality is, people don't, people are like, well, I don't know, you know, I don't know if I want to fight the devil or not. What if I lose? Jesus has already crushed his head. And if this is a new doctrine to you, it's all right. You keep studying with us until it makes sense to you in every part of your life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Well, here we go. I don't see any questions. Anybody got a question about something we taught tonight? You're, you're free to ask a question if you want. I'm going to play our closing prayer. And um, let's see where we are here. All right, it's safe. <laughs> don't want that lady yelling. 90 seconds. hope that you've enjoyed this message today. My prayer for your life and family is that since you're an heir of salvation, the angels of the Lord will minister to you every day every of your day. life. I know that since you're dwelling in the secret place of the Most High, you will remain, remain stable, stable and fixed under the, and shadow, fixed of the Almighty, shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. I say he delivers you from the snares and traps with which the enemy would try to stop you. I say the word will be your shield and buckler every day. You will not be afraid of anything. You may see thousands Pray fall by your yourself, side, but it, will not. but it will not come near you. Only a spectator, spectator shall, shall you be, be yourself, yourself inaccessible in the secret place. No evil shall befall you. No plague or calamity will come near your dwelling. For he will give his, his angels special, special charge over you, you to accompany, company, defend, and preserve you in all of your ways of obedience and service. I say all, all these, these blessings, blessings will come on you and overtake you. You'll be blessed in the city, in, in the, the field, field, in the fruit, in the of, your fruit body, of your body, in your work. And God, God shall increase you more and more. 
I say you're blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. I say the Lord shall cause your enemies that come out against you to flee in seven ways. You'll be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. And you will not turn aside from any of these words of the Lord. I thank the Lord for you, and I pray that he shall grant unto you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, of insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of him. I pray the eyes of your understanding be flooded with enlightenment so that you can understand your place in God and that you know and understand what is the immeasurable, unlimited, and surpassing greatness of his power to you as you believe. And as always, we want you to know that we love you. God loves you. He has a place for you in his kingdom. He is good, and his mercy endures forever. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' mighty name. Well, we love you. Remember? Um, hashtag COF, Holy Spirit Swagger. That's a good, that's a good hashtag. You put that statement in, and then underneath of it, you'll make another comment. And then, um, hashtag Believers Challenge. And anything you see that's a powerful statement about loving your neighbor praying for your nation, or um, worshiping the Lord with your tithe, get that hashtag Believers Challenge and share that and stick that right in there. Because we're just creating this just mass production of everybody, love your neighbor, pray for your nation, and worship the Lord with your tithe. And this thing... It might not look like it's big, but this thing's growing. And it'll, all of a sudden, it's going to just take over this thing. And our life's going to be blessed and your life's going to be blessed. Well, I think that's all I got. Anybody got any more questions? Sister Lisa, you got anything? Dan? Mother Mary? Apostle Peter? Phyllis Raymond? All right. Who else we got? Lisa Craig? Shannon Tony. All right. Brother Tanbeer, we love you. We call you blessed right now in Jesus' mighty name. We already bound the devil. Aunt Terry, we bless you. Luann and, and um, Arlo and Luann, we bless you guys. Thanks for being here. Trey and Tisha, we bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, you know what? I, I know some names over here. Phyllis Raymond was over here. Sunday Geyser. Carol Bowles. Barbara Dobbs, it's good to see your face, Barbara. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. God bless you. May this message be a blessing to you and to your family. In Jesus' mighty name. Well, we love you. We love you guys. Till we see you again. This is what we say. We love you. God loves you. And Jesus is Thank you.